Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. This week I am coming to you guys from Finland. i um, just finishing up here in Finland and I'm on my way to Poland. So um, as I'm sure you guys can tell from the fact that I keep mentioning this at the beginning of my videos, I just thought it would be interesting for you to know that we are all across the globe in all kinds of different countries, all kinds of different people from different walks of life and different languages use our, our products. Um, so I think it's kind of interesting for you to be aware of that. Um, so this week I thought I would do a quick tip, um, not an involved tip, but a quick tip, and I'm going to call this one X Sheet Basics. So I'm going to do this tip today in Animate Pro, and um, I just decided to do this because then you can see how it works in Animate, Animate Pro, and Harmony all in one go. Um, it pretty much works the same in all three platforms. And um, if you think about it, the timeline is a horizontal representation of what's happening in your scene over the course of time. In other words, you've got your layer here, and then you've got your marker on the top of your timeline here that indicates the frame number, and you have this playhead that you can drag to adjust the current frame. When you're working in the X sheet, it's a very similar aspect. You've got, instead of having a horizontal layer, you have what we call a vertical column, and the vertical column has a name just like the layer has a name and in fact they will be the same and you also have on the left hand side of everything the frame number indicator so and you can still use your shortcuts to go forward and backward a frame it's the period to go forward a frame and the comma to go backward a frame if you have drawings in there um, then there are different shortcuts to go to the previous and the next drawing and I'll go into that in a second so, of course, you can have multiple drawing layers, like if I add a new drawing layer, when I add a new drawing layer to my timeline, it also shows up in my X sheet. And anything that you do in your timeline will show up in your X sheet, and vice versa. In other words, they are tied together. They are just two different ways of representing the same thing. So you might say to me, well, Lily, you know, why would I want to use the X sheet instead of using the timeline? And you know, there's um, a couple of reasons why, and one of the reasons why is that when you're working from the X sheet, you have the ability to see an actual visual representation of what's in that frame. In other words, let's say I take this frame, let's go in frame one, and I'll draw, I'll draw a drawing in here, I'll call this one. Okay, so this is drawing one. By default, when you just start drawing and you create a drawing, it creates drawings with numbers. So if I just do a drawing in um, the first frame, it calls it drawing one. If I go to a frame later on and I do another drawing, it's going to call it drawing two because it's the second drawing in this drawing layer. And so on and so forth. So maybe I have three, let's just do a few more, four, and let's do five. Okay, so now I've got these five drawings in here. When I'm looking in my timeline, I can see due to the vertical line here that there's a new drawing on that frame but I can't actually see what the drawing is. In the timeline, you do have the ability to show what we call here the data view, and when you show the data view, as you drag your playhead over, you see the number here in the current frame. So you have that readout there. Consequently, also, if you have your library window open, the library will show what the current drawing is in the drawing substitution window as well. But, that being said, it's really useful in the act sheet view to be able to see what those drawings are. And there's a few different ways that we can work with the act sheet that are kind of different and kind of the same to what we do in the timeline. So, one of the things is you can select drawings in here, and when you select a drawing in here, there are three different areas that you can adjust in this cell. There's the very left-hand side, and when you mouse over the left-hand side, you get this plus. There's the center of the drawing, and the center of the drawing allows you to select drawings. You can also double click on a drawing, so I'll talk about what those do in a second. And then you've got the right hand side, and when you mouse over the right hand side, you get that up down arrow. And so let's talk about what these different things do. I'll just go to drawing five to show this as an example. So on drawing five, if I mouse over the left hand side, I have this drawing selected, and I drag it what it's going to do is it's going to move the current drawing. So when you drag from the left hand side where the plus shows up, the left hand side allows you to drag the position of the current drawing. 
If you drag all the way from the right hand side where you have the up and down arrow, if you, for example, drag down from there, what it does is it actually extends the exposure of the frame. So it, it won't allow you to remove exposure, only to extend it, but it's good to know that that's a quick and easy way to extend the exposure. So let's say, for example, if I'm on frame uh, or on drawing four here and I drag down, by default, what it does is it overwrites the frames on, on the next drawing. In other words, you can see down here it says overwrite. And as I drag on the right hand side, it's not moving these drawings down, it's just overwriting the current drawing. So let's undo a couple of steps here. If I double click on this guy or I click once on it instead, it will turn it to insert. So let's say, for example, if I just drag down when insert mode is on, do you see the difference? Do you see that when insert mode was on, it actually shifted these other frames down? So it's useful to understand what these different options do uh, because depending on what it is that you're trying to do at that particular moment, you might want to choose to do something different. Um, and the other thing that's really interesting about the action view, I, I mentioned before that you can see the name of the drawing, which is really nice. The other thing that's really nice is being able to quickly swap to a different drawing. So, you know, when you're in your timeline and you select a drawing and you look in your library window, you can swap and this is a very nice visual representation of what's going on, so I could swap there to drawing five. That's one way of doing it, and that's fine. But there's another way of doing it in your X sheet. If you double click on the current cell, you can enter the drawing number that you want to swap to, and that's going to swap to that drawing on that frame. So, in other words, on this frame seven here, I swap to drawing three. Frame eight still stays with drawing five, but since I swapped to drawing three on this frame, you know, the difference between what happens in the timeline and the X sheet is if I swap on this frame in the timeline, it will swap it all the way until the next tick. It's just the way it works in the timeline. So in other words, if I select this frame here and I swap the drawing here, it's going to swap it all the way to here. In the X sheet, instead, when you swap a frame, it only swaps the current frame. But after that, if you're in overwrite mode, you can always go back and drag that down if you want and overwrite the other drawings. Or you could have it in insert mode and you could drag it down and shift the other drawings down. 